talking with Gary Loveman, CEO of Caesars Entertainment, the world's largest gaming company. Uh, lots to talk about, Gary, but for one thing, you have something like 40 million customers and you know a lot about them. What are they telling you about the state of the U.S. consumer now? Well, they're telling us that it's getting a little better, Jeff, uh, after a period of two and a half years where it got rather steadily worse. Right. So people, when they visit us, they gamble out of money that they consider to be available to them to indulge themselves. Right. This is not money that comes out of their investment portfolio or the sale of their home. This is really money set aside for fun. And when their liquidity suffers, they still visit us. In fact, they visited us just about as often as they had before, but they visit us and spend less on each occasion. Well, during the recession, it was sure tough on Las Vegas. It was tough on the industry. It was tough on Caesars. What did you learn going through that unprecedented time? Well, I think we learned a few things. We learned how to run the business more efficiently, which is a challenge when you're serving the same number of guests under equally demanding circumstances, perhaps more so. Of course, the, the Caesars strategy is built on customer analytics, getting data about the customers, analyzing it and using it better than anybody else. First question, why pursue that strategy? Because your major competitors really don't, or at least not nearly to the extent you do. Well, we, do, we have done this for quite some time, in part because I recognized many years ago that competing on a facilities-only strategy is a very capital-intensive and rather low-return approach, and that's what the casino industry has suffered to some significant degree. So instead, why not ask, what is it about Jeff Colvin that is unique in his preferences for the type of gaming experience he most desires? And if he's willing to share some information about that with me, can't I customize that experience for him to the best of my ability each time and gain his loyalty through that means rather than having to keep building ever more opulent facilities and attract him in an undifferentiated fashion? So you get information on customers because they're all part of this program, the Total Rewards right. program. They get a card that they use wherever they go in one of your uh, facilities. So you have data on everything they've done. What's an example of how you might analyze and use that information with regard to a given customer? Well, let's say when you visit us in Las Vegas, you eat primarily at gourmet restaurants. We have a variety of food-oriented events. We might invite you to a food-oriented event because we know you have a taste for gourmet food. And we know that you travel to Vegas at certain times of the year, but historically you've never traveled at other times of the year. So we make an offer to you that's very specific with respect to date, location, the nature of the event we're inviting you to. Perhaps we know what type of accommodation you prefer, that you often combine fine dining with entertainment. I gather you found also in analyzing all of this data that some old conventional wisdom in the industry about who you want in your casino turned out not to be correct. Is that right? Well, we focused a lot of attention on customers that were good but not remarkable right. slot players, for example. So, of course, the industry lore dating back to Bugsy Siegel was around high-end male table game players. And most of the, what you see in, in the movies and other places is associated with that. But a 60-year-old lady who spends $500 a day when she visits one of our facilities playing slot machines is a very desirable guest, and we can do a lot of things for her that make her want to single us out as her preferred provider. And so across 54 locations around the world, 45 million customers, we can do a lot for people like her. You have been strongly in favor of legal, regulated, online poker. Uh, I remember years ago asking Steve Wynn, one of your competitors, about online gaming as a potential threat, and he scoffed at it. He, he said, a guy sitting at a computer alone is never going to be a threat to the excitement and glamour and fun of a casino. Right. What's your view? Well, I think Steve's right with respect to casino games. What we've been advocating is poker. So poker is a very different game. Poker is played against the other players, not against the house. The house is simply the agent for the game. And the beauty of online is that if you come home this evening after a hard day at your magazine and you decide you'd like to play some poker, you have two options. You can invite a bunch of us over to your house and we'll make a big mess of it and you can't get rid of us and so on. Or you can log on and play online against players of a caliber that you choose. You can play as long as you wish and when you're finished, you log out and the evening's over. 
it's a terrific use of the internet to facilitate a game that is, as a matter of law, a game of skill. And for that reason, we think it is legislatively quite palatable and, in, in, in fact, quite compelling.